Welcome to the video on rough cut capacity planning. Now there are different methods which can be used for rough cut capacity planning. In this video we will look at the method known as capacity planning using overall factors. Now let us recap what is rough cut capacity planning which I have covered in my previous videos. Basically, after developing a prospective master production schedule, we need to check if the MPS is feasible in terms of the available resources like labor, warehouse, machinery, supplier, capabilities, etc. This process is known as the rough cut capacity planning as it gives only a rough approximation of the actual resource requirements in terms of capacity. Now let's consider this as our prospective MPS. Now there are two products on the master schedule X and Y and they are produced by three work centers called M1, M2 and M3. Now, in order to produce one unit of X, the standard hours required is 1.557. So let's say hours per piece. So for X, it is 1.557. And for Y, it is 5.331. Now, what we have been given is that in week 1, 10 units of X are to be produced. In week 2, 10 units. In week 3, 15 and so on. Similarly, in week 1, 25 units of Y are to be produced. In week 2, 25, week 3, 20 and so on. And what we were also given was that both of them require three machines, M1, M2 and M3. So we have been given that each unit of X requires 1.557 hours to be produced totally right so so basically 1.577 hours considering the time required for m1 m2 and m3 and we have been given that in week 1 we have to produce 10 units so now let's find out the total hours for each product that is required so for week 1 x is required to be produced in 10 numbers and each unit requires 1.557 hours so the number of hours required for 10 units in week 1 will be 10 multiplied by 1.557 same in week 2 10 into 1.557 same for week 3 15 into 1.557 for week 4 again 15 into 1.557 and week 5 also 15 into 1.557 now for y each unit requires 5.331 hours in week 1 we have to produce 25 units so the hours required in week 1 for producing y is 25 multiplied by 5.331 for week 2 it will be 25 multiplied by 5.331 in week 3 20 multiplied by 5.331 in week 4 20 multiplied by 5.331 in week 5 25 multiplied by 5.331 so let's now calculate these numbers so basically 10 multiplied by 1.557 will be 
15.57 again 15.57 so as you can see I have noted down these uh, numbers so what these numbers are basically for each of the week how much total time is required for each product to be produced that means how much time each of these products is going to be utilizing on these three machines m1 m2 and m3 so x in week one will require 15.57 hours of m1 m2 and m3 similarly y in week one will require 133.275 hours of m1 m2 and m3 now since both these products use m1 m2 and m3 let's total up the hours required on m1 m2 and m3 so basically 15.57 plus 133.275 so this becomes 148.845 so as you can see i have totaled up the number of hours for all the subsequent weeks as well now we were told earlier that both these items go through three machines that is m1 m2 and m3 now we have also been given that 20 percent of the time of any of these products is spent on m1 so 20 percent is spent on m1 45% is spent on M2 while 35% is spent on M3. So let's understand as further. So let's say this is your machine M1. This is M2 and this is M3. Now, if X has to be processed, so one unit of X comes to M1, here it spends 20% of its total manufacturing time. Then from here, it goes to M2, here it spends 45% of its manufacturing time. Then it goes to M3, it spends 35% of its manufacturing time and is finally converted into the final product. So same is the case for X as well as Y. Now earlier we had found out the total number of hours required to produce X and Y in each of these periods utilizing M1, M2 and M3. However, we did not find out how much hours is required on M1, how much hours are required on M2 and how much hours are required on M3. Because each of these machines will have their individual capacities. So we need to identify whether any of these machines is being overutilized or underutilized. So let's find that out. So we know that of the total hours 20% that means 0 0.2 is utilized on M1 45% that means 0 0.45 is utilized on M2 and 35% that is 0 0.35 is utilized on M3 so what we are going to do is 148.845 multiplied by 0.2 will be the hours required on M1 148.845 into 0.45 will be the hours required on M2 and 148.845 into 0.35 will be the hours required on M3 so this becomes 29.77 62 
point 0.1 similarly for week 2 and so on so as you can see I have noted down the hours required on each machine for each of the weeks so with this data you have a rough idea of the capacity requirements for each work center in order to meet this master schedule so at this point clearly there are decisions that should be made so now let's take m1 now m1 is required for 29.77 hours in week one now let's say the capacity available is 40 hours so this is being underutilized by around 10 hours whereas m2 is required for 66.98 hours now depending on the capacity if it is available for 40 hours then this is being overutilized if the available capacity is 80 hours then it is fine I mean it's being a little underutilized and so on so you need to make decisions at this point now if the capacity available is lesser than the capacity required then either the capacity needs to be added or the mass schedule must be modified in case capacity cannot be changed so this method is a very rough method as it is done at a very high level the bill of material and the detailed routing is not considered in this method however it gives a fair idea of what is the capacity required and what is available.